Let's use Luminar Neo to cut out a group of people from the background, replace it with a new one, and then do a quick clean edit on that group portrait. So come along with me and see how we can use Luminar Neo's AI tools to greatly simplify and speed up this process. Let's get into Neo. So let's jump into our catalog here. And here we can see a group of photos that were just kind of thrown together spur of the moment so there wasn't a whole heap of thought process behind this the only thing i was really concerned with was trying to get as much of the neutral background that existed in his kitchen space as possible behind us in these groups in this photo that i'm going to be working on you can actually see parts of the pantry here the door frame behind the floor i want all of that removed so that i can just have a clean white background or at least a neutral background so the first thing i'm going to do is jump into the edit section and zoom in just to check the quality of the photo and unfortunately it's not great it's pretty soft it was taken by somebody else on my camera and as you can see it's got a lot of digital noise and it's also not sharp so the focus point was missed slightly so what can we do to correct that well if you have luminars extensions then obviously going into the noiseless raw would be an excellent choice just to kickstart this edit and as you can see before i've even played with any of the slider settings that's done a pretty good job of just cleaning this file up for me i could also use super sharp ai as well now if you don't have the extensions for dealing with sharpness or noise issues don't panic too much because you still can through develop raw access both sharpness and noise reduction options obviously they're not powered with ai technology unfortunately but they still can help us so you can just play with those just to help you get your image in a slightly better place so this was our before and this was our after just with moving those sliders you do want to be careful just how far you push the luminosity slider within noise reduction because if you push it too heavy it can start to give you a photo a very plasticky and fake look to it like that so i'm just going to drop this back down somewhere around seven or eight now before we isolate the figures in this photo what i want to do is just make sure that the color is good i want to make sure that the exposure is good so currently i actually feel like we're a little bit underexposed so we'll brighten that up and one of the things you'll notice is that the light is coming from the left hand side here and it's actually brighter towards the floor than it is up at the ceiling we've got a low ceiling just over our heads here so me and my friend here we're actually slightly underexposed when you compare us to my friend's wife on the left hand side here so i'm actually going to deal with the exposure in a couple of passes so i can set it correctly for the overall photo then i'll brighten us up darken down the ladies kneeling down here and my friend's wife as well but for now let's just get the exposure set pretty much where i want it i'm going to say i'm happy with that jump back into the tool section and that's going to allow me to apply a new develop tool over the top so i'm going to grab the exposure slider and just bring that down so that i can take care of the brightness on the left here and also on these two as well and so that we can paint that in precisely i'm just going to come into my masking option here and i could use an ai mask to pick out the people and then work with it that way but i think a much quicker and simpler way to do it on this occasion is just to get our trusty brush set the strength to 50 percent as i paint and that's just going to allow me to build that up like that i don't feel like my friend and i are too underexposed but i will just give this just a subtle little bump boost the shadows as well and i'm going to do the same with the mask i'm just going to come into my brush with the paint mode set to around 50 percent paint that over my head my friend's head and maybe even a little bit over my son as well there and then using the backslash key, I'm just gonna see my before and release it to see my after, before and after. Okay, looking pretty good. So what are we going to do about removing this pretty unsightly background? Well, we need to come over to the layer properties pro section here, and we're gonna come into the masking area. We have options to either use the portrait background tool or the background removal AI tool. Either one is gonna work for us. I'm just gonna go with the background removal tool. And as you can see, we currently just have main object selected, but already it's done a pretty good job at isolating us from the background. But you can see a couple of areas where the mask hasn't picked up, but that's okay. We're just gonna click remove for now, and then we can move on to refining that mask. And now we cross our fingers and hope that Luminar can do a good job for us. Okay, so this is where we're at at the moment. All we need to do is come to the refinements brush here. Now, we have three different areas available to us. We have the blue area, which represents the background, which is being removed. We have the orange area, which is the object. And then we have this transition area around the edge. So all we need to do, if things aren't quite right, is give Luminar a helping hand. 
and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the brush slightly smaller so that I don't make any mistakes and I'm just going to paint over the areas where we still want to see the people. And when we release, Luminar will update the mask based on our selection. I've started painting down there, but I don't really need to. It's this area down the bottom that we need to fill in. And make sure it's getting the leg there. And if I use the scroll wheel to zoom into the arm area here, you can see that something funky is going on here. So I'm just going to get the transition brush and just paint that over that. That's going to clean that bit up. And it's still not quite picking up this little area here as background. So I'll just come in and just get a little bit more precise with that. That's pretty good. So if we hop back out of that now, you can see that we've got a really nice clean cutout of the people in the portrait. So that's so helpful being able to do that. And now we just need to introduce a new background, which we do through the layers section inside Luminar Neo. It's really easy to do. Let me show you how. We just come up to the top left and click the plus icon in the layers section. And that gives us the ability to load a new image in as a new layer. And so to do that, we just click the plus icon and then we can navigate to anything we want. Um, I should have something available already just to make this nice and easy. Okay, let's just load in this plain color swatch here. It's not what I want for the background, but I'm just gonna show you how we can basically use anything and manipulate it. So I can just stretch that to fit my canvas. And currently we don't see the people because the layers are the wrong way around. I want to grab this. So I click and hold and then drag that underneath the people. And here you can actually see because there's quite a difference between the background and the people, you can see where maybe I needed to be a little bit more precise with cleaning up that portrait and I can absolutely do that. However, because I'm gonna be putting in a pretty neutral background, I'm not too worried about that. So how do we make this background neutral? Well, for a starter, I'm just gonna jump into my develop section. I'm gonna come into the color tab and I'm just gonna desaturate it nice and easy. Now we have a gray background, but I'd like to have that brighter. So I'm just gonna grab my exposure slider and boost that up. I can push it further to go for more like a pure white, but I think I'm just gonna go for an off white in this instance. If I wanted to introduce a texture over the top of that, just to give it a bit more interest, I could absolutely do that. I think I've got some textures loaded from a previous tutorial. So let's just click this one randomly and push my opacity to 100 so that you can see what we're dealing with. And again, all we need to do is drop that underneath the people here. I'm gonna use that in conjunction with the layer underneath. So currently I'm at 100%. If I drop the opacity to zero, we see what we did just before. But what if I sort of tickle in a little bit of this? As I say, this was a bit of an impromptu photo session. Nothing we're wearing is color coordinated and that's kind of bugging me and there's a lot of pattern and busyness in what we're wearing. So in order to simplify the image and make it easier to look at it in terms of a portrait and not get distracted by all of the different logos and colors and patterns, what I'm gonna do is actually create a black and white version of this. And that would just help to kind of unify all of those elements together. I think I'll go for quite a punchy black and white. So let's see how I do that. Well, firstly, I need to make sure that the layer selected is the one with all of the people on so that any changes I make are affecting that layer and not the background that I've introduced. So now I've selected that I'm going to come in and we're going to convert the photo to black and white. So just with the black and white tool, I click convert to black and white, nice and easy, but it's certainly not the punchy black and white look that I was going for. One thing that can help is to actually increase the luminance value of the red and yellow, therefore bringing up the brightness of the skin tones, uh, but it's still not really giving me that look I'm after. And so one tool that could help us here is the dramatic tool. That's one that's really good at accentuating contrast. So if I grab the amount slider, and push that all the way to 100. It's very gritty, grungy, and probably a little bit too extreme for what I'm after, but it's certainly helping to introduce a lot more contrast. I can decide if I want a lot of local contrast or a minimal amount. I'm just gonna play with that, maybe leave that around the middle, and we can either brighten or darken that down. And now I've made that black and white change. I've decided that the background is just a little bit too dark for what I'm after. I think a cleaner, crispier, white punchy look might be better. I don't think that texture is really doing anything for us in this case, so I'm gonna remove that layer. That's gone. We're now back to just the pure, clean, just off-white background, and I think that looks much nicer. 
Obviously, if I wanted to clean up any of the faces or improve the portraits in that way, I've got this whole portrait section within Luminar Neo with all of the AI tools that are gonna to help me do that. But for this, I just wanna keep it pretty natural, pretty close to reality, and I'm gonna say I'm done with that. Let's have a little look at our before and after. Here's our original group portrait, bit of a throw together in my friend's kitchen. And here's our cleaner, a little bit more contemporary cutout version with a nice clean background. As always, my favorite bit, before and after. If you've got portraits with messy backgrounds and you want to clean them up, um, you really can't look past Luminar Neo for a tool that's able to do that quickly and efficiently. If you want to get hold of it and you don't have it yet, I've got a link in the description below with a discount code as well. So help yourself out to that. And if you want to learn more about how to edit portraits themselves, don't really touch on the portrait um, retouching aspect of it at all in this video. But if you do want to learn that, I've got a video on it that you can click right here and go and learn more about it. I'll see you in either that video or one of my future ones I release. So don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys, cheers for watching. See you in the next one.